I'm with Alfred Hackett on two and a half thousand acres of some of the most beautiful country you will see in your life in the Victorian Alps. And we're talking the latest in high-tech fencing. <laughs> How are you, mate? Nice to meet you, Tim. Tell me a little bit about where we are, mate. What are you running here? Um, we're running 460 Hereford, Hereford Shorthorn cows and 1,400 crossbred ewes. Um, yeah, fatten the lambs off and get rid of them. Now, running sheep in the high country, not a lot of people can do that, can they? In fact, your family got out of it about 60 years ago. Yep. yep. What's the reason for that, mate? So, due to the wild dogs and a few other foot issues, um, they had to yeah, get rid of all their sheep and go into the cattle. And now with the new technologies, we're able to bring the sheep back in. And that's made a big difference to your business, hasn't it? Because the return on sheep is so much better for you. It is, it is. Um, yeah, sheep are much more profitable with cattle and where you can run them and mix things around. So how are you keeping the dogs off the place, mate? Um, so over the last couple of years, we've set up a suspension fence, exclusion fence around the place with um, and then powered by the Gallagher units and satellite monitoring. It's yeah, a game changer. Now, looking at this country over here behind us and certainly in front of us and beside us, it's just amazing. The terrain is incredible. It must take you forever to check your fences. It used to, but now it doesn't. With the satellite gateway, within half an hour, we know the zone where the, zone where the problem is, it's fixed. And you don't have that many problems. You were a little bit sceptical about using suspension fences at the start, weren't you? Yes, yes. And you had an incident with some cattle? Yep. Um, Tell me about that. I was feeding some cattle after the fires and two mobs of heifers that had together all ran in and hit, this, hit the suspension fence and I thought, oh, it's a goner. Yeah, it's going to be trashed. It's trash. I'll just sit back and watch this and they all hit it. It nearly laid over to 45 degrees. And then it sprung back, they all ran across the paddock and the fence is still standing up straight as of this day. Because people get confused about that sort of thing, don't they? They think the more tension you put in this fence, you know, stretch it rather than strain it, they think it's stronger. But you actually don't put a full strain on your fences, you rely instead on the power from the energizer yep. to deflect animals. And even if they do happen to challenge it, you've just got that, that much more deflection capacity. Correct. So with the power running through the suspension fence, it's actually around about a metre wide instead of a normal traditional fence, eight inches wide with the posts. Yep. The cattle have got to hit it to and be strained up tight to stay on one side of it. But with a suspension fence, that little bit looser and the power moves them straight off. Now, setting up these monitors, is it difficult? Do I have to have a PhD in electronics? Definitely don't because I'm not an electronics person and very simple. Yeah, right. Now we've actually got Noel actually up at the shed where your energizer is doing a routine house call. Isn't that nice of him? That's nice, yep. We better go up and see Noel and he'll show us how to fit the little satellite monitoring box and how to fit one of these monitors on the fence. Terrific, let's go. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Alfred, you got someone in your shed, mate? G'day, Noel. G'day, Alfred. How are you today? Good. How convenient is this? Noel's here. Now, Noel, you're going to show us how simple and easy it is to set up satellite monitoring for your fence. Um, it's something that I've always thought was quite complex, but you reckon it's only a, a couple of steps. Let me show you how easy it is, guys. Hey, before we start, Tim, here's the instructions. Ah, they look nice. Okay. Here's the cable from the controller. I'm just going to unplug that from here. So you're unplugging a cable yep. from the back of the energizer that links to the controller there, That's mate? That's right, yep. And I'm going to plug in my new one here, my new one. And that's a cable that comes with the monitor? With the monitor and connects the energizer to the new satellite interface. Okay. Earlier, we actually put the satellite aerial on the roof, which we'll show you a photo of. And how hard is that to mount, mate? It's a magnetic mount. So this beautiful tin roof, we just magnet on the top and beautiful to go. So no screws or anything no for installation? No screws needed at all. Right. This now is show our, us what this is. This is our satellite interface box. Yep. Okay. Pretty simple. We have, as so you can see here, that's a power plug. So that's our 12 volts coming in and we have two RJ plugs and they can be plugged in any way around. So it doesn't matter which way you put your cables, it doesn't matter. So I can put the cable into either one either of them? Either one of them. Doesn't yep. matter. And here we have our satellite aerial connection. Okay, so the aerial from that little aerial that so we just just put here up, goes straight in. Simple as this while we're talking. Look at that. 
just get it up by hand, a good hand tight, it's nice, it's okay. Yep. But now uh, let's put it on the wall. Looks pretty level. And now I just have my three wires to plug in. So my connector from the energizer to the box, my connector from the controller over here to my satellite box. Just quick and simple like that. And now I just need some power. And where are you gonna get that power from? So, same power source as the Energizer? Same power source as the Energizer. This is actually a solar bank setup. Yep. So we've got an inverter running the Energizer. So we've got a lovely 12 volt bank here, which we can plug our satellite into just like that. So people are running a 240 volt system? Yep, so this is supplied with a 240 volt adapter if needed. Okay. Or you can adapt it to 12 volts if you need it, just depends on... So you're running it off 240 volts in the shed, same plug just from an adapter. Yep. And if you're running it off a solar array like you are here in the paddock, Yep. just plug it straight into the inverter. And let's just turn it on. Now in terms of connecting this thing to the satellites, how okay. do you do that? Okay, so... And just now you could probably hear a little beep 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 in the background that's actually it talking to the satellite straight away so once you get it is actually you hold this button down here for two seconds to turn it on the little glowing button can you see that just in there little glowing button yep simple as that then all you do is actually load it up on the app the Gallagher app the Gallagher a device app on the um, and it'll load up the satellite and you start monitoring straight away. So this product, or actually the iSeries product, can actually have up to six monitors on it for monitoring points around the fence. So basically, if you break your fence down into six points, you can monitor six points anywhere on the property. So Noel, we've installed the gateway. We've got a gateway that talks to the satellite in the shed next to the energizer. Now, if we want to monitor our fence, we can put out a series of boxes around the fence, little monitors up to six per gateway that will talk directly to the satellite and let us know how the fence is going. Yes, we have. Now we're starting out on the furthest end of the fence, the furthest away from the energizer. Yes, that's right. And you're gonna take us through how to set this up so that it's telling us the right information. Correct, let's go. Okay, it's easy, Tim. All we need to do now is dismantle the unit. So slide the cover off all the way, take our batteries out. And this is the part we're gonna to mount to the post. Now we're gonna mount it here. And the reason we're going to mount it approximately here is a bit of protection from the fence itself, from the gate coming around. Um, and we're in, we're in the fence here, a little bit a little bit of protection here from the cross member here, so, you know, cattle can't get to it here. We'll do some cable ties around here nice and neatly. And we'll also run our cables to the fence wires, which we'll show you how to do that too. I won't do that, these up real tight yet until we actually assemble it so we can actually slide the cover back on top because if I do it in here this is in the way of course for putting the cover on. So next step you see here a little hook on to go onto the terminals here. So we have three terminals but because we're at the end of the fence we only need to use two of them. One is the live wire of course to the fence and the second one is the earth to the fence. So I'm going to just shape these and clamp them up to the hot wire here. So I'll start with the hot wire. And of course, always clamp wire connections. This is my favorite joint clamp. You can see here it's got slots in it, so you can do apps of four wires in it. Quick and simple like that, and all I've got to do is do it up. Just like that. And we have our earth, oh sorry, our live wire connected. So now we're doing the earth wire. And you can see up close here, I'm actually putting it between the two washers so I make really, really good electrical contact and clamping the wire down quite tightly. You know, I'll use a shifter instead of my pliers. Nice, firm. In all fence connections, you want them clamped tight and firm. Again, with the joint clamp. Again. Just like that. Okay, now we're actually ready to actually power the device up. This part could be confusing. We're actually setting the zone up on the monitor itself. Because this is the end of the fence, we're gonna make this monitor zone two on our little dial here. 
because we're going to put a second monitor closer to the energizer we'll make that zone one in the sequence of zones so what i'm going to do now is is actually turn the fence on with the remote control we need to turn the fence on to activate the monitor so just holding it here and pressing the button now the fence is on i'm going to install the batteries to fire the unit up so just like that slide our cover back on just like that we're good to go now back at the controller itself our zone will come up on the display itself saying we've put this connected so alfred and his wife are not only cutting down on labor by locating fence damage quickly and easily but they're experiencing less damage due to the fence flexibility. Their vulnerable stock are also safe from dog attack. So maybe it's finally time we reassess old fencing habits and adopt new technology.